Hello, everyone. I'm Lior, and I'm the director at Aaron Finer Eden Material Library at Design Museum Hulon. When Madonna sang this iconic sentence way back in the 80s, she was glorifying consumer culture, portraying it as the cusp of our aspirations. But when we look at this sentence with modern eyes, it takes on a different meaning. Back then, our knowledge and awareness on the subject were limited. But today, we know that the materials we choose mean everything. Materials are the sheer existence and basis for everything physical in our universe. Even beyond that, materials are the foundation of the future of humanity. Their use and misuse sits at the very core of, of the discourse on climate change. The materials we choose to work with today will dictate the future of our quality of life and our continued existence on Earth. The understanding that materials drive change on global scale isn't new. Petroleum is a material that changed the world. With the technological breakthroughs of the 20th century, petroleum, a byproduct of oil, emerged as the preferred energy source. It became such an important material that it has ignited three major global scale wars. Concrete is a material that changed the world. After water, concrete is the most widely used substance on the planet. The material is the foundation of modern development putting roofs over the heads of billions, fortifying our defense against natural disasters and providing a structure of healthcare, education, transport, energy, and industry. Plastic was and still is a material that changes the world. It's a bit hard to imagine that the main motivation for the creation of synthetic plastics was an ecological reason as a replacement for elephant ivory. Plastic was celebrated as a magical, ultra versatile, super affordable material that will bring wealth and prosperity to all. By now, it is almost, almost impossible to imagine our modern society functioning without it. Disruptive material discoveries are great leaps forward for humanity and have sparked some of the biggest revolution in history, leading to golden ages of growth, development, expansion, and improvement in our quality of life. We embrace them with open arms, and it's difficult to imagine our world without them. Now we are at a different point in time. We understand that this mad dash forward has a price that we are already beginning to pay. Here is a disturbing fact. In the year 2020, the anthropogenic mass of man-made objects outweigh all global living mass, biomass. But materials are the ones that will lead the change. They got us here, but they can definitely get us out. So uh, what is a material library? Much like a regular library, we have shelves filled to the brim with stories and potential, inspiration, solution. Only instead of books, we have material samples classified in families like wood, paper, plastic, metal, textile, glass, and more. The world needs material libraries for the same reason we need book libraries. We are a source of knowledge, innovation, inspiration, and creation to our visitors. We aim to connect between ideas and creators, especially in these times, when we are, when we are at the brink of material evolution that affects how we think about design and creation. Our material library is public and open to anyone who wants to visit. It's the only material library in Israel and one of the pioneers worldwide since 2008. An advantage that we have, one that sets us apart from other material libraries worldwide, is the fact that we are part of Design Museum Hulon. And our collection is part of the museum collection. Materials from our collection are often part of the museum exhibitions. And at the same time, these exhibitions have hosted material that later became part of our collection at the library. This closeness allows for museum visitors to be exposed to us as well. We often welcome young children with their parents and retirees, along alongside students of design academies and industry professionals from the fields of design, innovation, and technologies. So what do we do all day? Like detectives researching the future, we search for 
we, we search for in, interesting innovations in the field to enrich our collection. And we are not without an agenda. We are particularly search for objects, projects, innovation, and developments that react to the climate and environmental crisis. And to our delight, we feel that awareness and engagement with these issues is intensifying in all areas, textile, building, technology, and more. We have also noticed that the development of new material is no longer the territory of the big companies that have the capital and the means. In recent years, startups, young designers, and small companies have started developing and marketing new sustainable materials. We have also noticed that an increasing number of designers choose to, designers, sorry, choose to design the materials themselves as part of their design process. No longer do they just simply choose materials off the shelf, but they pay greater attention to the suitability of the material for the project, taking into account both shelf life and its end of life cycle. And since what can already be found doesn't always serve the intended purpose, designers are to engage in material development too. And here I would like and I would love to share an example. Meet Tipa. Tipa is an Israeli company established in 2010. They were inspired by orange peels to develop single-use packaging that completely biodegrades after its use. And its degradation also fertilizes the soil. They aim to make a material that can easily replace conventional packaging plastics, meeting the same performance standards like shelf life, transparency, durability, and so on and fitting with the existing industrial machinery and manufacturing practices. We have also seen a change in the mindset regarding material production. Instead of going the usual route of development, investing in energy and emitting pollutant in the process, many of the new materials are based on crops and agriculture, for example, and something that I personally think is one of the most interesting material concepts, meat fungi or mushrooms. Ben Gurion University in the Negev Desert has a fascinating research laboratory that investigate the use of fungi as building materials. Much has been already said about their impact on life on Earth, and if you haven't seen yet Fantastic Fungi, please do, on Netflix, by the way. And for a few years now, researchers are examining its potential as a substitute to less eco-friendly materials, such as polystyrene or styrofoam leather, and in this particular case, concrete building blocks. Fungi grows fast, and in its process, it can consume agricultural waste that will have been burnt otherwise. The resulting material has amazing insulation properties that are far suppress those of concrete bricks. We've also noticed an increase in demand for local production, use of local suppliers, local raw materials and waste sources in order to produce new materials. And for example, Createra. Createra is a brand of interior wall tiles made from quarry waste. This composite material is intended for various uses in construction and architecture. It has the same structural strength as concrete but six times its thermal insulation capacity. It has only 5% of the energetic footprint required for concrete production, releasing 90% less emissions and pollution. The material is produced without firing of any kind and from a combination of local raw materials like stone powders, sands, clays, and plant fibers. This results in a material that's breathable, and healthy that allow for complete recycling or biodegradation at the end of the product's life. That leads me to another trend, which, which is challenging and rethinking production disciplines and common and routine technologies as in the case of Cornit. Cornit is an Israeli company that has been operating for nearly 20 years. It has recently found its place as one of the leaders in the revolution in sustainability in the fashion industry. They developed specialized printers and pigments for textile 
that allow direct printing on fabrics with almost no water use without the need to pre-treat the textile. Beyond its reduced impact on the environment, this technology allows for local on-demand production and efficient use of raw materials, and it has been used by Amazon, Adidas, Nike, Lululemon, Versace, and more. Wait. Sorry. Hope that music woke you up. Um, the amount of waste generated has reached 2 billion tons a year and continues to grow at an alarming rate. What if there was a way to put all this waste to a good use? This is exactly the question that sparked the foundation of UBQ, and I will let them speak for themselves. Wait, sorry. Okay. Waste is one of the single biggest challenges to civilization. Two billion tons of waste are produced globally each year. 80% of this waste is dumped in open landfills, polluting our rivers, our lakes, and our oceans. And only 4% out of it will be recycled. The problem is even bigger, as landfills generate 8% of our world total carbon emissions. As population grows and economic conditions improve, the problem grows exponentially. At UBQ, we developed a revolutionary solution to the waste epidemic. We have redefined waste disposal, eliminated waste-related pollution, and unlocked the immense value inside waste. So what is the UBQ solution? What we can tell you is the base of our paths. We take all your household garbage, the organic parts like food residues, garden trimmings, and dirty carton, the unsorted packages and mixed plastics, and instead of dumping it to the landfill, we convert it into a new material. During the UBQ conversion process, the heterogeneous stream of materials is reduced to its more basic natural components that reconstitute and bind together into a new composite sustainable material the UBQ material. All this through a clean, energy-efficient, and commercially viable process. What is UBQ material, you ask? It's a new bio-based, climate-positive, worldwide patented material that can be used in existing industries for the manufacturing of thousands of products. It is clean, sustainable, and cost-effective. And it is also recyclable, the greenest thermoplastic material on the planet. We provide the missing link between waste disposal through to new product manufacturing, transitioning from a linear extraction and consumption model that exhausts our natural resources to a truly circular economy. Brilliant minds are behind this breakthrough development. We are proud of our team. All of the materials and technologies I've shown you were developed here in Israel and are in the library's regular collection. Any visitor who comes to the physical space or enters our bilingual online database can find all the relevant information and contact the companies, suppliers, and creators directly. And since we are a public material library, we are not committed to any one supplier or institution. This allows us to produce collaborations with all the design academies in the country. This was reflected in a pop-up exhibition we recently created at the library, present, presenting 11 projects by graduates from different disciplines from Israeli Design and Art Academies, all dealing with the question, what will I wear tomorrow? Painting a picture on the future of clothing, fashion, and wearable technologies. 
a fascinating project that combines material and technology and out-of-the-box thinking about garment design is the project of Yarben Sanfati, a graduate from the jewelry and fashion department of the Tzalel Academy of Arts and Design. Having to work with the constraints imposed by COVID, um, she used the home 3D printer to create a square cut of organic cotton with printed fasteners. This allowed her to develop a flexible textile that can be turned into a wide variety of seamless garments. The resulting collection addresses different body sizes and it's, it's a subject to the zero waste principles. So, Wait, I'll try it again, if not. Okay. We are in an interesting point in time when it comes to the material world. We are at the beginning of a material and technological revolution. Restraint, reduction, and minimalism are values that are becoming stronger around consumer culture. We need to rethink how we view resources, waste reuse, and the importance of empathy and consideration when choosing production methods and the material that surrounds us. Thank you.